go and pick that inflation, which people expect to fall off a cliff, doesn't fall off a cliff as fast or as meaningfully as people want. And there you have it from billionaire Chamath Palapatia, and he's given his take on what's coming for this year, 2023, and his take on inflation. That's a small clip. We got more of this before the video's out, so make sure you watch this to the end. But he'll be talking about his prediction for the third chapter of inflation. Yep, he's saying that we've been through two chapters already, and he's calling for a third chapter to play out in 2023. So once again, you don't want to miss this video. Before we get to any of that, make sure you go ahead and check us out at Bitcoin Bros. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you go ahead and subscribe and smash that like button. We really appreciate it. We really appreciate all your support. And taking a look at the Bitcoin price chart, what do we see? What do we anticipate? Now, Bitcoin has had a rally as of late. Let's zoom into the price action to see what we see. And we see Bitcoin at the current time this recording is coming in at 22,743. And we're looking at Bitcoin versus the US dollar on the daily chart. Right now, what do we see recently in the EMA ribbons? We've seen this long call. And since that long call has been had, Bitcoin has blasted up about 25%, but then had a cool off a little bit. We reached all the way up to around the level of 23.3. Will this move sustain? Are we out the woods and is the bottom end for this bear market? Well, looking at this, we see this EMA ribbon is looking pretty good and we did get back above the yellow line with the EMA ribbon indicator. So once again, this is the daily. Let's look on a higher time frame. Let's look at the weekly. There's a difference here. You see that we're not out the woods yet. We're not a back above the yellow line and the EMAs are still red. But one good thing is that they are starting to coil up. So if you look at any history of Bitcoin, once the weekly starts to coil up from the red just a little bit, that's a good sign and it tends to turn long within a given time frame. So this is back in the 2019 bear market. And if we look further back in the charts, what do we see? The first time we have some type of coil up, which is right here, then we had a dump here. So it sort of double bottomed out. This was a time where there was an anomaly. So we seemed like we were out the woods, came up, then dumped all the way back down, seen that double bottom pattern before we blasted up to the upside and then ultimately turned green. So we could see this double bottom scenario play out. You have to be aware of this, but once again, we're not out the woods yet on the weekly, but going back to the daily chart, what do we see and why do we think that we could be out the woods? Because every time we come below this yellow line, every single time, and we're down there for a significant amount of time, when we come back above it, it's definitely bullish for the short term. And we have had a close above it. Looking at the last bear cycle, when we had that 2017 peak and we came below it, we were below this yellow line for a substantial amount of time. But the first time we got above it, we had a rally. We had a relief rally, but then we cooled back off. But then we didn't stay down too long. This was a black swan event. If the pandemic didn't happen, then we could have seen this just rally starting from here. So all in all, we are looking very good on the daily because we have been below this yellow line and that's a very huge resistance band. So definitely looking bullish for Bitcoin. And a couple updates we'd like to show you, the Bitcoin weekly super trend buy signal. We just showed you this on the daily for the EMA. Other people are seeing this too. Titans of crypto also seeing the CMF the check-in money flow just moved into the positive. So every time this happened in past, every time this flipped to the positive, the bottom was already in. So another indicator showing that the bottom is in. And then this right here from Game of Trades, the Bitcoin number of addresses with over one Bitcoin have been accumulating like there's no tomorrow. This ups the odds of a Bitcoin supply shortage. So why is that important and why do we care? Because when there's a Bitcoin supply shortage, that means a supply shock, and then also it's gonna be a shock to the price. So if we take a look at this chart here, every time the orange line is above the black line, what happens afterwards? So back here in 2016, 2017, the orange line was above, and then the price had a shock, and then we went up to that $20,000 threshold. Every single time, we were briefly above it here, price had a shock. And then we are above it here, 
then we went on a rally once again in 2021. So definitely like and retweet this. This is definitely a good find. But right now you see this is the time that you should have been dollar cost averaging if you have not. Without further ado, we'll get back to the clip from Chamath. He's talking about the inflationary pressures that could still be amongst us in 2023. If this inflationary balloon continues to bubble up and continues to give the everyday retail investor pressure, pressure to pay bills, pressure to go grocery shopping are they going to have to break the bank are they going to have to go into their piggy bank are they going to have to go into the reserves are they going to be able to afford to continue to shop well you have an option to opt out let's see what your mouth has to say we'll go and pick that inflation which people expect to fall off a cliff doesn't fall off a cliff as fast or as meaningfully as people want and so I will explain inflation as three different chapters, and we've seen the first two chapters play out. So 2021, chapter one, was all about energy inflation. And, you know, we all talked about having almost $10 gas at the pump and what does it mean for everybody? And it caused that initial spike in inflation. And then we had it come off, and Sachs called this. He said, you know, we're going to have this sort of double hump and 2022 was really the story of goods inflation, right? All these prices and all of these things went up because the input costs went up and we all had to bear the implications of that. But then that started to ebb. And now, if you looked at the tail end of 2022, what I found super interesting was the number of articles I saw about wage inflation, whether that was Biden using an 1800s era law to prevent a railroad strike, the number of states that increased minimum wage, the trend around unionization. So in general, my thought is that the pendulum is swinging very markedly away from capital and towards labor. And as the labor participation rate stays low and continues to go down, and also it's compounded by an unemployment rate that may go up, right? People are it's going to be harder and harder to get people to do the work you need at the company you have unless you pay them more. And if that gets exaggerated, then inflation will stay where it is. It won't be as muted and it won't fall off a cliff as people want. It'll be so persistent. That's my, that's my big contrarian Got it. wager for this year.